Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This video, I got a Hulk build for you. Um, I worked quite a while on it, trying to get it perfected. This is about the best um, I've gotten so far. Obviously, you can optimize some of the gear to make it better. Just quickly before we get into the build, um, I got a couple announcements. Don't skip this. Um, so, first off, just thanks for all the support over the last few videos here. We've done uh, really well. Um, and also, just... Uh, if we can meet my goal of 100 subs, we're, we're a little ways away, but uh, we are growing decently quickly. Um, so if we can get up to 100 subs, we're already at 35 subs. So I mean, if just 35 subs brought in one of their friends to come and sub, we're up to 70 subs. So um, if we can get to 100 subs, I'm going to do a challenge. So for every sub that I have, I'm going to do a lap of a basketball course. So if we can get 100 subs, I'll do 100 laps. If we can get 110 subs, I'll do 110 laps, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to have a two week time period on this, so two weeks from the date this video posts um, will be the time and if we can get up to above 100 subs and I'll do the laps um, and film that for you guys. So um, if we can get to uh, that uh, milestone then I will definitely uh, make it worth your while and show you uh, me dying running around a basketball court. <laughs> yeah, other than that let's, uh, let's jump into the video and uh, yeah, we'll go over the Hulk build. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see the stats up here. Uh, again, we'll we'll jump over these um, a little bit later, and I'll tell you where you sort of want them to be. Um, obviously, this isn't maximized yet. We're still sitting um, only at 144. So I mean, if I maxed out all this gear that I have on right here, then uh, it would up my abilities a bit more. But there's also some pieces on here that I don't have the perfect traits for, which I'll go over um, if you can find those pieces. Um, so first off, we have uh, on his hands here now the one main thing on his hands that you sort of want to get for this build is that one at the very bottom for the bone shaker um the increased damage while bone shaker is active so you get 17.5 percent there so that's actually it's a pretty decent amount while bone shaker is active and this build keeps bone shaker up pretty much constantly um relatively you can never die i play all in game content with this is what i run my mega hives with i run i ran my last mega hive on brutal difficulty and had no scares whatsoever of dying so this thing's very survivable because of Bone Shaker, and with Bone Shaker up, you deal incredible amounts of damage. So we're gonna we're sort of building around Bone Shaker. Um, so that's the most important perk down there that you need. You want that, and then you want to have a decent amount of might, like a good might buff on there and a good Valor buff, which I have. Um, the last one there isn't as important. Um, I would rather have had like an additional might buff or an additional Valor buff. Um, but anyhow. Now down on these ones, uh, this is uh, on Hulk's, um, whatever this second part is, like his arm piece, um, it's all ranged, and we don't use ranged on the Hulk, so um, what, what I went for is, the, at the very bottom piece, um, increased uh, stun damage of signature attack, power attacks, or sorry, not signature attacks, of power attacks. Um, now what that is, is pretty much when Hulk charges up and he does the slam on the ground the, for the five times. Um, it'll increase the damage of that, um, or the stun damage anyhow. Um, this piece is sort of, you can just change out to whatever gives you the best stacks. And as you can see on here, I have a Might and a Valor stat. And if you look at any of my other pieces, it just decreases my stuff too much. Like even this piece that boosts those up, it gives me a minus 7 to health. And you want to be around that 11,000 health, or 1100 health, um, for their defense rating to give you that 13,000. Um, health that I find is a good number to be at for survivability wise. So pretty much for this piece you can pretty much switch this out to anything you get that has good um, stats on it. Um, so this piece here, uh, obviously this is not gold and I've been waiting to try to get a gold piece. I just haven't found a gold one that has the first buff is the most important right there, like your perk, the first one. Um, that's the one you want. <clears throat> uh, chance taking damage grants you a damage buff. Well when you're the Hulk you're taunting pretty much constantly with this build so you're always taking damage. You get that damage buff and your stats just skyrocket. I'm sitting, uh, when I uh, in the gameplay at the very end, I'll show you how much your uh, heroic rating actually goes up, but it goes up quite a bit, and your melee rating jumps up a lot. This is an incredible buff. If you looked at my Thor build, um, I run this on my Thor as well. It's it's an insane buff. Um, also, the spin armor is really good because this like this Hulk build is based around using your abilities, and spin can really screw up your abilities by draining them away. So this gives you the 50% reduction <coughs> to uh, spin. So this this is a is a good piece to have that spin armor on there. Um, 
but yeah, the main piece you want is that chance, taking damage, grants damage buff. And like I do have, I think, one on here that actually does have the damage. Maybe I don't on me right now, but uh, I don't. But I do have a gold version of this, but I just it didn't have as good as stats on it. And your stats you do want really good up at the very top there. So uh, yeah, if I could get this gold with the might and the valor buff on it, it would be. I would, I would go for that because your uh, chance I think jumps up to like a 16 point something, so it's a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's one of the pieces you really need, so main pieces that you, like, uh, perks that you want, you want that 17% on your hand, so make sure you're looking for that, make sure you look for the 15% uh, damage buff on your chest, and then the very bottom one here is Bone Shaker, again, this drops from anywhere, all these pieces can drop from anywhere, none of them are um, special to any certain areas, you can farm them wherever. Um, the really important one here is... Increased damage while Bone Shaker is active. Now you'll only get these off of the Bone Shaker and they look like this. Right? So there's two different sort of styles of how they look. You'll never get this 20% damage buff on a piece that looks like this. So it's only on the pieces that have the, uh, they're sort of like longer and slender. Um, and there's a few different pieces you can get. You can see there's a the damage one there. There's the 30% increased stun. Uh, there's a 20%, but again, it decreases my. Um, heroic rating down and my health down quite a bit so that's why I haven't put this on yet um, but this one does have really good buffs on it because it has the increased 20% damage which is the one that you need um, then you have the 17% chance to feed an enemy against the damage buff which is or not the damage buff, a defense buff which is really good um, to keep you more survivable even though you don't really need it on this build, this build's like super survivable just from the abilities which we'll go over later and then defeating three enemies in rapid section and grant the damage buff. Now these cannot stack so um, the damage buff from this and then the damage buff from this, they do not stack, but um, in case you're not taking the damage and you kill three enemies, like right after you do your Thunderclap, your Bone Shaker into Thunderclap, you're guaranteed to get it at, um, after doing that because you're definitely killing three enemies more than likely. Um, so these two do work pretty good together, having the three grant you the damage buff, three consecutive kills and the damage, but I mean if you don't get this on your bottom piece, three consecutive kills, you don't need that. It's mostly your main thing is to get that 20% bone shaker. Because that gives you a total of 37.5% uh, additional damage while bone shaker is active. And I'm telling you, like I hit on like on the brutal difficulty, I'm hitting for like 50,000 on a finisher um, critted. So this deals incredible damage. If you know brutal difficulty, your damage descales a lot. Um, but yeah, with, with Bone Shaker up and having your damage buff active, you can hit... I've hit up to 60k now. I've only seen that a couple times um, off of a just a singular punch, but um, you can hit up to that amount with all your uh, buffs active at the same time. So over here, um, you pretty much want um, anything to get your stats. You want to be around that 11,000 here. So, like, as you can see, I have a few different ones here, like... Uh, or is it like this piece here really increases my health. You don't really need that. If you're having issues with survivability, you could throw something like this on. But I, I like to have, uh, I think 13,000 is plenty of health for the Hulk, when, uh, especially when you're constantly running Bone Shaker because you just take barely any damage whatsoever. Um, and like I said, with this, you can pretty much have Bone Shaker running 100% of the time. Um, so I just pretty much put on two ones here with a Valor and Might buff, Valor and this one has a Resolve, which isn't is great, if this was a, a Valor Might, it'd probably be a bit better. Um, but yeah, just things to get your stats up. You want to be, like, preferably, <clears throat> if I could get this to about 25, that would be nice. Um, this one, just over 2,000 would be nice, and then these two are whatever, like, you want this to be around 1,100. Again, after, if I maxed out all this gear, I could probably boost this up to about a 1950-ish and boost this one up to probably about a 2300. Um, but th th that's around about where you want them. Like I said, if you get this to 25 and this is just over 2, um, it'd be good. A lot of people run a lot more melee on their Hulk. I find it's not as important on this build because um, this build produces heroic energy or heroic orbs like crazy so you're just constantly getting your abilities back so I think having a little bit higher of a heroic rating over top of your melee is a bit more important um, and the reason why this build gathers energy so quickly is because you're running the ring which the ring as you can see here it increases the amount um, restored by all orbs by 11% so if you're grabbing a heroic orb it increases an additional 11% on top of that and then chance defeating enemies will provide a random drop. You only have a 1.2% of, of that, but 
still, you might get a random orb drop, which is always nice, whether that be health or uh, heroic. Um, so we'll jump over into um, yeah, the skill. Oops, go over into the skills here. Um, <clears throat> so again, here you're gonna have all these unlocked. Um, so in the skill tree, so um, for your bone shaker, which is what this is what you're pretty much basing all your things around because, as I said, you're getting an additional 30% damage here. Um, so what I go with is the defeating five enemies while bone shaker is active increases the duration of for five seconds. So this will give you a 25 second bone shaker. Um, and like I said, you kill it. It takes about four orbs to, I think it's four orbs to get your bone shaker back up. So as long as you kill four enemies, um, you get your bone shaker right back because, as you can tell right on this one, on the other side here, um, defeated enemies who are taunted, <clears throat> but bone shaker causes them to drop a heroic orb. So bone shaker has a very large radius on it. So when you hit bone shaker, you're going to pretty much taunt everything in a room. Um, so all those are going to be taunted. They do not... They are not taunted, so keep in mind, they are not taunted for the entire duration of Bone Shaker. It's, I don't know how long they're taunted for, probably around like 10 seconds. Um, but as long as you kill enemies in those 10 seconds, which is why I said you Bone Shaker into your Thunderclap. <clears throat> because Thunderclap's going to kill anything that is in the area that you just taunted. And give you back enough heroic energy to have this back charged up. And have your ultimate back charged up. Is that this build is meant for ad clearing. It's very good for the hives. This thing does destroy elite enemies, and I'll show you all that of how this works. Um, but yeah, so those are the two ones that I go with. Um, over here on your assault, um, I run the 200% uh, increased stun damage, but I don't, it, it's up to you if you if you're having a little bit of a if you want like more heroic orbs, you can. Do this one, 50% chance to feed an enemy will grant a heroic orb. Um, and if you don't know how this sort of works, this will actually, if you hit an enemy with this and you run into them and actually Hulk will either grab them if they're a bigger enemy, he'll just go into right into an execute phase. So they will start to, uh, he'll do an actual execute, which is in our mastery, which we'll show you a little bit later. Every time you do perform a, a finisher, it grants you a, a heroic orb. So if you have this on, there's a chance that it provides two heroic orbs every single time you hit this button. Um, which is why I have the, on the other side, I have the two charges of it. Um, because that, technically, if you're running this version of it, you can produce four heroic orbs just from hitting this one of, this ability twice. And also this ability gives you, as you can see here, restore up to 60% of your max willpower based on the amount of damage you dealt. I don't think I've ever not hit this button and I've gotten a full heal off of it. Um, so this is pretty much your heal. If you're if you're getting low on health, you hit one of these, you're going to get back up to pretty much full health. Um, and it's also a way of producing heroic orbs if you are like one heroic orb short of getting this and this back up. Hit this into a larger enemy um, run the, and they'll run into him. He'll pro produce a heroic orb because he'll go directly into an execute. Um, which will give you the hero Corp to get this back up and this back up. So this is sort of like your button to get out of trouble if you're hurt or to produce a little bit more heroic orbs for this or this. Um, <clears throat> so jumping into the um, ultimate thunderclap, I run the 25% um, the increased damage. This does small in the range, small, uh, makes the range of your thunderclap a bit smaller, but... Um, it deals the 25% extra damage. So I like this one a little bit better. It guarantees you killing bigger enemies. Um, and most of the scenarios that I find myself in, um, like hallways, this is way better for hallway clearing. Bigger rooms, you'd probably be better off going with this one. Um, <clears throat> but this is up to you. Either go up here if you like the additional range of Thunderclap. Or here, if you just want the most damage output from Thunderclap. Um, I, I usually always run this one, though, because I always find myself, even after I Thunderclap, I usually always have my Thunderclap back up and ready to go again, so I can just hit this again. Pretty much get two Thunderclaps out of it. But if you do want the extra range, then go go for here. I just like the extra damage. And then, <clears throat> over here, again, going for the Heroic Orbs, there's a 50% chance any enemy killed by Thunderclap will produce a Heroic Orb. So, technically, 
as you can see, this is just Heroku. Just before we even get to the mastery, I mean, you got a you got a 50% chance every time you hit Thunderclap. Every time you kill an enemy, you're guaranteed. So when you taunt, um, you're gonna get that. You have a 100% chance if you kill an enemy while they're taunted to get a Hurl Corpse. That's why I say hit this, then hit your ultimate, um, and then you technically can produce two Hurl Corpse for every enemy that dies. Um, so if you only kill three enemies, there's a chance you're gonna get six Hurl Corpse from that. Which is, again, on more than enough to recharge every single ability back up to full again. So as you can see, even if you um, Bone Shaker into Thunderclap when there's only three enemies around, there's still a chance you're going to get them both right back up again. So you don't necessarily need to wait until there's a massive horde of enemies to um, use these two abilities to get all your energy back. So it's <clears throat> it's really good, and that's why I said like working on um, the uh, like uh, elites with the blue shields. If I I'll, I'll Bone Shaker, then I will use one Assault Heroic, and then I'll Thunderclap, and pretty much they all die. So, you get all your energy back once again for everything, So like, uh, and if they don't die, they're very close to death, and they're in an Execute range, so that you can just hit your uh, Execute on them, and again, grant Heroic Orbs. So, like I said, anything you're fighting against, you can just get your abilities back so quick, it's so broken, it's crazy. So going into the mastery, some of these are very important, some of them is not so important. I'll tell you if it's very important and make sure you go for that one. If I say it's not so important, you can play around with it and see which one works best for you. Um, <clears throat> so in the first one here, um, this one here, not so important. Uh, uh, it, it's all about holding enemies, uh, which you don't really do a whole lot in this. I don't really grab a whole lot of enemies, so this you can sort of play around with. It um, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, here, increased uh, damage on impact will hold enemies by 20%. Again, not that important. All these are about holding enemies, which we don't do a whole lot of. If you play more of holding enemies, then you can play around with this and see which ones you like the best. Over here, this is important. Um, this is the one <clears throat> take down, performing to take down spawns of her all corp. Right? That's why I'm saying with the. Uh, with this one here, this puts you into a takedown. So, just by hitting this button into a bigger enemy, you're going to perform a takedown, which grants you the heroic orb. So, that's why I'm saying this is so good. Also, you put a lot of things into uh, execute range, so you can perform the takedown with Hulk, because he uh, he does a lot of stun. Um, range here, again, nothing really too important. We don't throw a whole lot with Hulk as far as uh, damage goes, so you can play around with this. I do end up using the smaller debris instead of larger debris, so that's why I usually base things around the smaller debris instead of the larger stuff. But, <clears throat> not super important. Um, down here, this is one sort of a little bit increase um, strength by 15% while Rage is active, so uh, this, this does keep you up a little bit easier while your Rage is active, which you have up on Hulk quite a bit. Um, so, again, not super important, but this one is definitely, I think, better than the other ones a little bit, but... Um, up over here, increase all damage by 50% while Rage is active. Um, this is pretty good because this does give you a 15% damage buff if you have your Rage active. Um, so, <clears throat> I would definitely go with this one over the other two, but, again, you can play around with it. Um, over here, <clears throat> increase the maximum amount in terms of... Rage energy by 15%. I put that one on there just because the other ones didn't really make a whole lot of sense, and I find this one's probably the best out of all of them. Um, <clears throat> so over here, uh, increased critical attack chance by 15% while overcharged. This one's really good for your increased critical chance. Um, if you're overcharged and you hit your thunderclap, that 15% uh, critical chance is very nice because I mean I can crit up to 300,000 on a thunderclap, so. It's really nice if you're overcharged when you hit your thunderclap. Uh, if you don't know how to get overcharged, just literally just beat up on enemies. Don't make sure you don't hit your. I don't know what it is would be on Xbox, but uh, don't hit your. It's R2 on PlayStation. I don't know what it'd be on Xbox or computer, but yeah, just don't. If you don't hit those and you're just beating up on enemies, or you're taking damage, it uh, builds up on Hulk. So it's that little bar right underneath your health. Um, so increase all damage done by 20% while overcharged. 
again, like I said, this, this really stacks well together when, especially when you get overcharged and you can thunderclap or use one of your abilities, it deals a ton of damage. Um, and then increase overcharge energy gained by takedowns by 25 or by 50 percent. So this this will gain you a lot of your uh, overcharged energy um, while you're performing takedowns. As I said, you do quite a bit with Hulk. Um, so yeah, that's how I have it set up. You can play around with it a bit. The really important ones is this one here. Um, you grant that heroic orb because you really want to produce heroic orbs. And then these three are quite important to have them set up like this. Um, but this one and this one, you can sort of, and these ones here, you can sort of play around with and see which one works best for you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's the Hulk build there. Um, like I said, this thing can beat any in-game content very easily. And... Um, yeah, you really never have an issue surviving. Like like I said, I've never went down with this build. I think I went down since I've had it like this like once, and it was an accident when two um, I was fighting two mechs, and they both decided to blow up at the same time, and I didn't see one of the red circles underneath my feet. So when it blew up, it hit me down to about half health, and then the other one, as I was standing back up to try to get out of the uh, Radius of the second one, it blew up and uh, yeah, ended up killing me. That's the only time I think I've ever died on this build. Um, and yeah, it's like it's super survivable. So, and I'll, I'll show you at the end of here of how this thing actually performs. Um, and yeah. All right, so here we go. We're gonna jump into this mission. Um, <clears throat> so as you can tell up here, uh, challenge difficulty, hardest difficulty you can get. Um, plus six levels, obviously this would be a little bit higher if I was max level, but this is 150 enemies, this is the hardest difficulty of Brutal. So, uh, we'll jump in here and I uh, will show you what this build can do. So, uh, as far as what I said this thing can do, it, it does do really good damage, but obviously your damage is going to be a little bit less than what you're going to see probably on most people's builds because this is on Brutal. Most people that I see actually doing builds are usually on difficulty 3, which is actually quite a bit of a damage increase when you're on difficulty 3 to Brutal. I don't know what happens when you go to Brutal, it's just your damage all decreases like crazy. Um, but yeah, you, you'll see what this thing can do actually on the hardest difficulty in the game, because I think that's what everyone's going to strive to try to do eventually, is to get to the hardest difficulty, and can this build actually hold up on the hardest difficulty. So, now this isn't, again, this isn't a hive or anything like that so this isn't the hardest difficulty in the game because elites are going to obviously give you a bit harder stuff um but this will give you a good idea of how this thing actually performs and like i said this i did this on the mega hive on brutal and it was completely good so um yeah let's get into here hopefully i don't die because i just said this build doesn't die but <laughs> uh right. so The reason I do this mission is because it's a quick mission, first off, so you don't take forever to uh, um, do this little thing. So, I think it's still here, so I'm going to Bone Shaker. That gives you all the taunted enemies here. And if you... That was not supposed to, that was a thunderclap for some reason, uh, looked like a Bone Shaker there, but, so as you can tell, mega amounts of damage here. Not really in any struggle of dying. Um, and as you can see, I've produced enough heroic orbs to uh, gather back my abilities. Um. Hey look, it's a gold drop. Piece of candy. Ooh. Uh-huh. I freaking hate this. Enemies don't like to stay around to die. Um, so as you can see, I, I could have probably thunderclapped and hit my ability there again. I got enough orbs on the ground right now to recharge it fully again. Um, but I'll just save it for the next area. Um, yeah, as you can see, like, I, there was no time there that I even came close to going down, and, uh, it still dealt 
great damage, especially while everything was uh, bolstered up there. But I'll show you here, I'll show you the stats as soon as you get the damage buff. It does go up a lot, so... Um, Again, there we go, boom. As you can see, there's a lot of enemies over here, and we're just gonna kill them all right now. Look at that, 35,000 damage on brutal difficulty, absolutely insane. Do I have the damage buff active? I do not right now. Alright, so there it is right there. So, let's jump into... So there, as you can see, 27,000 melee damage and 32, 27,000, wow, I wish, um, so 2,700 melee damage and 3,200 um, heroic rating. And that's what I'm saying, like this, that's why you deal so much damage with this build, and as you can, um, and then on top of that, then you're going to increase another 30% because you have Bone Shaker active. So, yeah, that's why you just you hit like a friggin' truck while every, all your buffs are active. Um, as you can tell, I don't have all my abilities back right now, but I guarantee you there's probably heroic orbs over here that I never grabbed. Yeah, like four of them, enough to recharge my total abilities again. So, again, I could just do this. And even though there's barely anything, I'll just thunderclap here because I know I have enough ability energy. Um, and these are the about 50,000 damage. I know, like, this probably isn't hitting the hardest thing that you've ever seen, but for it being like this survivable, this thing hits like a freaking truck, and this is on brutal difficulty. So, if you're playing on anything less than brutal, you're gonna be like hitting like crazy numbers on this thing like I played on normal difficulty and I was hitting for like like uh almost 500,000 crits it, like on while well, my buffs were all active and uh I thunderclapped what world is these enemies at And that's sort of how you have to build in this game, is build around a whole bunch of different damage buffs that you can get on at the same time, because that's uh, sort of how you can increase your damage to the, the maximum. Um, where in the world is he? Jumpins. Alright, so now I'll show you how this thing does against um, the elite blue enemies, the ones with the blue damage shields. And... Uh, it does uh, it does clean up pretty well on these guys too. So again, what you're gonna want to do on these, the only thing you're gonna want to change is you're gonna want to taunt, and then you're gonna want to do this. Now what that's gonna do is break off most damage shields, and then you're gonna want a thunderclap. Now on this big guy, you can do this. See, and that's what I'm talking about. It goes directly into an execute. Um, which gives you your heroic orb back. As you can see, you take, take barely any damage. And done. But. So. Yeah, uh, that's what it does. It, it's absolutely insane what this thing can do. Um, and like I said, I'm not even maxed out yet. And you can get pieces of gear. Like, mine's not perfect. So you can actually get pieces of gear to make this build even better. So if you actually find that right, uh, traits, like, a little bit better traits than what I have, this thing will be absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one.